Barely three years ago, Nigeria began to build a new capital, here in the middle of the bush, miles from anywhere. So far, nearly two billion pounds worth of contracts have been awarded to build the new city in this virgin land. A sparse, barely inhabited area in the geographical middle of the country, it had scarcely seen a bicycle, let alone a bulldozer, until the construction companies moved in. But progress has been tough, and it's hard to imagine looking from the roof of this uncompleted Sheraton Hotel to the skeleton of another five-star hotel in the distance, that in between there should already be signs of hundreds of offices and thousands of houses. President Shehu Shigari's idea of moving here by September last year seems a remote dream. But there's no questioning the government's resolve to shift the entire administrative machinery here, lock, stock and foreign embassies, for whatever the cost and the chaos the rationale for moving is generally accepted. Lagos, the capital since 1914, is fast choking on petrol fumes. Despite the billions spent on flyovers and new roads, it cannot cope with the immense urban migration. Thousands of kilometers of roads were needed to join Abuja with the rest of the Federation. Thousands of houses and flats are necessary for the civil servants from the 15 ministries which will all move their headquarters to Abuja. But Nigeria wanted more than a functional capital. It wanted a spectacular capital. This will be the presidential palace. Complete with underground bunker, it will cost anything up to 150 million pounds by the time it's completed. Getting paid has become a real problem. The contract is going ahead. We are getting paid, but we're not getting paid as much as we should get paid. So obviously what happens is that you schedule, reschedule your program to take account of the uh, amount of funds which have been made available at any one time. The same applies to the small man. This man has been waiting five months for any money and he makes three or four trips a month from Lagos to try and get his cash. The government is doing its best to rein in the costs without destroying the idea. For instance, this ambitious model for the National Assembly, designed by Japanese architects, was costed at nearly 500 million pounds. It's now undergoing a radical rethink. But it's as the work slows down that the full extent of early mismanagement is becoming clear. Shoddy workmanship, overpriced contracts and lack of coordination have all hit Abuja. It's hard to believe, looking at the state of Abuja today, that the bush behind me will one day become a bustling new capital city with a population of more than a million people. But this government has continually repeated its determination to carry on with the project just as quickly as the cash will allow. The rest will probably depend on the world oil market. This is Mark Webster, ITN, in Abuja, Nigeria. Thanks for watching.